every season, the ocean presents mankind with all kinds of food. After thousands of years of fishing, humans have learned to distinguish poisonous fish from safe ones and even discovered rare delicacies in the ocean. One of them is blowfish. Bluefish is famous in Korea for relieving hangover. The Chinese poet Su Dongpo praised blowfish for its exquisite taste, for which he was ready to even die for. New York gourmets regard blowfish as one of the world's top four delicacies, along with caviar, foie gras, and truffles. But the unforgettable taste of blowfish comes at a price. Blowfish contains poison that paralyzes peripheral nerves. If the fish is eaten with its poison, it can cause suffocation and death. What part of blowfish contain poison? We analyzed the poison of a blowfish breed called panther puffer, which is quite common in Korea. We tested the intestines, skin and meat of the fish. First, we injected a weak acidic reagent in the parts to tranquilize them. Then, we filtrated and injected them into lab mice. We then compared how long it took the lab mice to die from the injections to find out which part of the fish was most poisonous. The mouse injected with poison contained in the fish intestines reacted first. Its heart stopped beating in just a minute. Soon afterward, the other mice died too. The experiment showed that the skin, meat, and intestines of the fish contained poison. But the most fatal poison was found in the intestines. How is poison formed in blowfish? According to scientific studies, blowfish poison called tetrodotoxin is created in a bacteria called Pseudomonas, which is found in seaweed. The poisoned seaweed is eaten by starfish and crabs, which are in turn eaten by blowfish. The Pseudomonas bacteria accumulated in blowfish through this food chain creates tetrodotoxin. Then, how can blowfish survive despite containing enough poison to kill 11 people? Ironically enough, one of the most delicious fishes in the world can be deadly. Does that apply to blowfish only? Vegetables and herbs are staple foods in Korea. Of the vast variety of herbs existing in nature, only the most nutritious and delicious are used as food. But... 
경유보감에서 보면 어, 이 고사리는 맛이 좋지만 오랫동안 먹지는 말라고 쓰여져 있습니다. 오랫동안 먹게 되면 다리에 힘이 빠지고 또뭐 복수가 찬다든지 눈이 어두워진다든지 이런. 이게 청산 배당체라고 하는 그런 성분이 있는데 가열하지 않으면 청산이 그대로 그 용출에 대해서 나오기 때문에 어 그래서 그 부분이 이제 독성을 일으키게 되고 또뭐 복통이라든지 뭐 머리가 아프고 또 심하게 되면 경련까지 일으키는 그런 증상이 나타나기도 합니다. 이것은 고사리 추출액을 2.5mg per ml로 24시간 처리한 실험이고요. 정상군에 비해서 많은 세포들이 죽어 있음 걸알 수가 있습니다. 죽어서 세포가 수축이 되고 부유 부유돼 가지고 부착면에서 떨어져 가지고 죽어 있는 세포들을 보여주고 있습니다. Cells died in taro, jinko nuts, and water dropper as well. We watched how blood reacted in the skate samples. The red blood cells were destroyed there too. Yeah, 모든 물질은 어, 독 작용을 가질 수가 있습니다. 이것이 이제 그 독이 되느냐 안 되느냐는 그 용량에 의해서 결정이 됩니다. The fact that all substances contain toxins was first discovered in the 15th century by Dr. Philippus Paracelsus. Back then. It was an epoch-making discovery because chemical technologies were underdeveloped at the time. Mankind realized this fact through experience and continues to use it to this day. 김한구 from Gangwon province makes a living by gathering wild herbs. We decided to follow him. This is a tree called a tree. It's called a tree. But it's called a tree. 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 He has 10 years of experience in this field. He easily spots rare herbs, even in lush forests. If you eat it a little bit, it gives you energy, it gives you allergy reaction. It gives you an effect of the immune system. If you eat it a little bit, it's like a drug. Don't worry about it, it's a drug. 왜요? 이게 다음에는 옷 오릅니다. 네? 옷 올라요. 이게 뭔데요? 참온나무입니다, 이거는. In addition to medicinal herbs, <웃음> forests are also full of poisonous herbs. 이게 우리 토종 어, 눈이 안 보일 정도로 붓죠. 그다음에 이 피부 발진이 생기고 예, 가려워서 긁게 되고 그러죠. 심하면 죽게도 됩니다. Until a century ago, 
people could easily distinguish between medicinal and poisonous herbs. But in an era of urbanization, that wisdom has died out. While few people know of medicine and poison these days, biases against these two elements are growing stronger. But Kim Hong-gu says that any medical substance can be poisonous if used in a wrong way, while any poisonous substance can be a medicine if used right. Silver vine fruits have a burning taste. Just one bite is enough to make the mouth burn. The fruits are not deadly, but they do contain poison. They're especially effective in treating gut. Aconite grows deep in the forest. The plant looks gorgeous, but is highly poisonous. In ancient times, it was used to kill people. But if used properly, aconite can treat disease. How can poisonous plants be used as medicine? The answer to this contradiction lies in how poison is processed. This traditional Korean medicine clinic uses traditional methods to make herbal medicine. Deadly aconite roots are used here as an important medicine. The seeds of croton fruits are also highly poisonous in their natural state. But once their poison is neutralized, they become an effective remedy for treating enteritis and constipation. There are more than 20 kinds of herbs in traditional medicine that contain deadly poison if consumed raw. In ancient times, removing toxins from the body using poison was a highly recognized method in royal courts. Sung Jong Won Ilgi, 
which translates into Diary of the Royal Secretariat of the Joseon Dynasty, details everything that happened in the royal court for five centuries starting in 1400. Records about King Jongjo, who ruled in the late 18th century, mention treatment methods using poisonous substances. King Jongjo of the Joseon Dynasty suffered from dermatitis all his life. His physicians used mercury to alleviate this pain. They burned mercury over fire and removed toxins from the king's body using smoke. They suspended treatment after three days to prevent addiction, but the king wanted to continue it. Even the king recognized the effectiveness of this method. 그런 경우 법제라는 방법을 씁니다. 법제라 그러면 이제 뭐 술을 갖다가 술에다가 약을 갖다 약에다 술을 뿌려 가지고 그걸 태운다든지 그냥 아니면 그냥 태운다든지 아니면 뭐 봉지에다 싸 가지고 열로 이렇게 그린다든지 등등 그런 방법이죠. 그런 방법을 썼을 때 독성이 완화된다는 거죠. 그럼 그 어떻게 완화되느냐? 그거는 이제 그 예선인들이 그런 방법을 통해 가지고 약물이 완화돼서 인체에 영향을 미치지 않는 것을 계속해서 그걸 경험적으로 그다음에 이제 그것이 하나의 지식으로 축적이 된 이제 그런 것입니다. 그것이. Traditional medicine is often overshadowed by modern medicine these days. But it is based on the wisdom of ancient scholars who knew how to make the best use of poison for medical purposes. That applies to more than Eastern medicine. The Ebers Papyrus, the first medical document in the history of mankind and once written in Egypt in 2000 BC, also contains detailed records about the use of medicinal and poisonous herbs. The Tokyo Metropolitan Medicinal Plant Garden is run by the Japanese government. Five surveillance cameras are installed in the garden, where everything is under strict control. Three locks must be unlocked to enter the garden. This place grows plants that are used to make antipsychotic drugs such as marijuana and poppy. They're harvested in July and the remaining plants are buried. <laughs> Poppy is a highly addictive material for opium and painkillers. It was first used as medicine in 3000 BC by Sumerians, who discovered the painkilling property of poppy for the first time. But their discovery was forgotten for more than 4,000 years. Instead of being used as painkillers, poppy seeds became a narcotic. And after the opium wars of the 19th century, emerged as an object of hatred. The person who discovered the medicinal property of poppy seeds in 1908 was the German pharmacist Friedrich Sertner. Morphine is the most effective painkiller and tranquilizer among natural materials. It was named after the god of dreams, Morpheus. The discovery of morphine paved the way for the use of poison in modern medicine. The leading cause of death in the UK is heart disease, which is usually caused by obesity diabetes, and hypertension. Recently, British researchers developed an epoch-making drug that helps prevent and treat heart disease. 
And it's these cells that stick together that give you the thrombosis that cause the heart attack. And what we want to do is understand how you activate platelets. Can we identify new ways to activate platelets? And then can we target those with new drugs? The new drug is based on snake venom. It contains substances that paralyze nerves, but they also treat cardiovascular diseases through a hemolytic action. I mean, leeches have been used for years in medicine. I think that it's it's the individual components of the snake venom. And, and it's a bit of a paradox. If a snake bites you, you will continue to bleed. So it have substances that prevent blood from clotting, which are, can be very helpful for thrombosis. But they also have substances that will cause thrombosis in other parts of the body. So they have so many components. So together, I don't think you want to be bitten by a snake, but taking the individual bits, it can be extremely helpful in medicine and many other forms of industry. The paralyzing effects of snake venom is also used in cosmetics. One British skincare product company has developed a hit product that helps reduce facial wrinkles. It's based on a synthetic substance that was modeled after snake venom. Uh, Glamoxy Snake Serum is a product that helps to um, relax the muscles of the face. Um, it contains an ingredient um, that is called cyanate, and it is a synthetic peptide that mimics the effects of snake venom. Uh, the way it works is um, this peptide communicates with the nerve endings on our face and sends a signal to the nerves to stop contracting. Since ancient times, people have been interested in improving their looks. But since the late 20th century, the beauty product market has been growing rapidly. The biggest factor behind the rapid growth of the beauty market lies in the muscle paralyzing drug, Botox. Botox has become indispensable in plastic surgery clinics and facial salons. It is used not only to illuminate wrinkles, but also to contract muscles. After after its debut in 1993, sales of Botox grew 50 to 100 percent annually. Last year, they surpassed 400 million dollars. Botox is made from botulinum toxins, which are extracted from the food poisoning bacteria called botulinus. Botulinus were discovered in the 1800s in the bodies of people who died from food poisoning. They're known as the deadliest bacteria in the world. Just one milligram of botulinus is enough to kill tens of thousands of people. Botulinus bacteria were even used in military and chemical weapons. In the 1990s, the world was shocked to learn that one Japanese religious group that attempted a terrorist attack had botulinus bacteria. If its plans had been a success, a major tragedy would have occurred. People who discovered the positive side of the botulinus bacteria were not military officers, but doctors. They extracted a special protein from the bacteria to develop a hyperhidrosis drug. 
다른 부위보다는 좀 부드러운 쪽에 많이 나다 보니까 아무래도 이렇게 사람들 만나는 직업이고 하다 보니까 신경이 많이 쓰이는 게 사실. 하이퍼하이드로시스 causes excessive perspiration in the armpits, hands, and feet. It's harmless to the body, but it can affect interaction with other people. 그렇지만 여기 보면 이렇게 하얗게 말라붙은 거 보이죠? 이 보톡스는 보툴리늄 그 톡신을 만드는 세균이 에, 만들어내는 그런 단백질이죠. 단백질의 역할이라는 것이 에, 어떤 근육을 마비시킨다든지 땀이 안 나게 한다든지 그런 역할을 하는 거죠. Botulinum toxins strongly paralyze surrounding substances. When injected into certain nerves or muscles, they block surrounding neurotransmitters, thus preventing hypersensitivity, which is a cause of hyperhidrosis. Medicinal remedies extracted from natural toxic substances are also studied as alternatives to chemicals and synthetic substances with side effects. 우리가 항생제를 많이 쓰면 그것이 잔류돼서 그것이 우리가 고기를 섭취했을 때그 성분이 인체에 남 남게 되고. 그거를 방지하기 위해서 부항생제로 가져야 되지 않느냐라는 생각도 해요. Chemical antibiotics have recently emerged as a serious problem because they undermine the immune system of cattle and are transmitted to consumer through meat. One of the latest alternatives to chemical antibiotics is bee venom. Bees use their venom for self-defense. It's fatal to humans. Every fall, there are people who die from bee stings. But how can venom be extracted from bees, which die shortly after attacking their enemy? 어 일반 벌은 침을 쏴서 독이 나오면은. 그 벌은 죽습니다. 근데 아. 이거 이 기계 같은 경우는 유리판에다가 그 침을 쏘기 때문에 음. 침은 안 빠지고 독만 나오니까 벌은 살고 아. 우리는 봉독을 얻을 수 있고. 아. Bee venom is obtained through electric stimulation, which is harmless to bees. The body easily absorbs bee venom and does not develop resistance to it because it's a natural substance. It does not cause serious side effects and is used in various fields. Bee venom has a purpose. We use it to use melatonin, phosphorylase A2, apamin. These three things are used to use. All of them are used to use amino acids and amino acids. So, it is used to use melatonin. In the past, we use melatonin to use melatonin. We use it to use melatonin. 인체용으로는 관절염, 류마티스 치료제, 또 간경화 뭐 해독에도 쓰고 있고요. Natural remedies are not only effective, they also don't cause any complications, unlike synthetic remedies. Natural toxins have emerged as a new promise in modern medicine. 독이라는 거는 그양 하나 하나 자체의 독 같은 걸 따져 보면 되는 게 아니라 그걸 먹는 사람의 어떤 체질, 그다음에 그걸 활용하는 어떤 다른 그 약물과의 배합 이런 것을 고려해서 이제 독을 사용하는 겁니다. 그러니까 그 자체가 독이 있다 그래가지고 어, <웃음> 이 약은 독이 있으니까 못 쓴다 
이거 아무것도 쓸수 있는 날이 없는 거죠. 몰래 보고 What is the public perception of cancer patients? 통증이 있고 암이 증식될 때는 먹으면 안 돼요. 어, 그때는 더 커져요. 그보다는 환기를 먹어요. 아셨죠? Back in August, we met with several patients at a cancer treatment center. They all looked happy and relaxed. 항암 치료했을 때는 사람 모습이 아니었거든요. 머리가 다 여섯 번이 머리가 빠지고 그리고 걸치를 못했어요. 어지러워서. 질결을 해가지고 신장을 왼쪽 신장을 다 드러냈습니다. 드러내고 그 후에 한 6개월 정도 항암제를 투여 받았습니다. 그래 받았는데. 양방 쪽 결과는 좋지 않았습니다. 음, 계속 그 지연이 된곳 쪽에서 종량도 계속 늘어났고 그렇기 때문에. People diagnosed with cancer usually undergo chemotherapy and radiation treatment, which affect the liver and cause hair loss and vomiting. Despite these serious complications, these methods are rarely effective. Chan jong bum was diagnosed with kidney cancer in 2006. Despite surgery and chemotherapy, his cancer spread even to his lungs. 이제 폐 부분이신데요. 그 좌측 폐에 지금 그 위에 부분 상엽 부분에 지금 이렇게 하얗게 보이는 그 전이 신장암에 전이 되는 부분이 보입니다. 그리고 지금 보시면은 이 하얗게 보이는 이 종양이 지금 사라지신 걸볼 수가 있습니다. Mr. Jun was in the final stage of cancer, but received a new chance at life thanks to an anti-cancer remedy developed by traditional medicine. It was made from the highly poisonous lacquer tree. Tongi Boga mentions the lacquer tree's effectiveness in treating extravasated blood. Modern doctors view extravasated blood as a cause of toxin accumulation in the body and malignant tumors. What kind of plant is the lacquer tree? Until 50 years ago, lacquer trees were very common. Nowadays, they're hard to find in urban areas. Even children know how poisonous lacquer trees are. My father was not able to move on, but he was not able to move on. He was very strong. He was very strong. He was very strong. 빨리 단풍이 들어요. 열화 되는 거죠. Lacquer paints used to paint furniture are made from lacquer tree poison, which can even repel harmful insects and microorganisms. <목소리> 이게 자체가 우르시올이라는 건데 어 패널 같은 게강 독성이에요. 상체가 나서 이게 터져 버리면. Just approaching or touching a lacquer tree is enough to develop a severe skin rash. Koreans are the only people in the world to use lacquer trees in cooking and medicine. The 옷을 먹으면 몸이 빨리 반응을 해요. 독이 독 같은 경우는 빨리 몸 쪽으로 찾으려고 움직이고. 다른 그 그리고 몸이 빨리 그 활성화되는 거죠. The medicinal property of lacquer trees, which is mentioned in Dongi Bogam, was forgotten for a long time. Lacquer trees have been widely used as medicine since the 17th century, but they drew particular attention in the 1990s when the team of Dr. Che Wan Chul from the widespread relief house focused its research on the effectiveness of lacquer trees. The team found that lacquer trees contain substances that impede the growth of new blood cells. In other words, they can stop the growth of cancerous cells. The problem was a toxin called urushiol. 
Even tiny amounts of this toxin contained in the ear can cause severe itching and inflammation. It was important to develop a technology that could separate Urushol. After 10 years of efforts, the team finally succeeded. During 10 years of observation, more than 10,000 cancer patients survived for more than five years. In some, cancer stopped growing. They didn't have complications, nor did their bodies reject the drug. Clinical research of Nexia is currently being carried out in the U.S. and Korea. But sometimes, drugs developed from toxins can have a devastating effect. Christian Schittmer from Germany has a leg disability. He is in his 50s, but has never once walked on his own feet. He was born with this disability because his legs did not develop normally in the womb. His friend, Dieter Mahawi, has an arm disability. These two men have different disabilities, but they both suffer from the same disease. They are the same age and both suffer from congenital disabilities. They have one more thing in common. Their mothers took a drug called Contegrin during pregnancy. The Grund, das war meine Mutter. Ich will das so sagen, sie hat am Anfang der Schwangerschaft Schwierigkeiten gehabt mit Übelkeit. Und dann ist sie halt zum Arzt gegangen. Und dann hat sie das Schlafmittel Kondagan, Schlafenberuhigungsmittel Kondagan verschrieben gekriegt. Sie hat davon eine halbe Tablette genommen. Und das Ergebnis ist bei mir unverkennbar, sieht man. Contagrin was developed in West Germany in the 1950s to fight insomnia and morning sickness in pregnant women. It was a huge hit because of its excellent effectiveness. But the nightmare caused by Contagrin began less than a year after its debut on the market. Women who took the drug during pregnancy gave birth to babies with deformities. More than 10,000 people were born with deformities because of Conocren. About 80% of them were from Europe. Only the U.S. was able to avert the disaster because all drugs imported to the U.S. must pass safety tests. Bei mir sind jetzt wird sichtbar eigentlich nur die Arme, sind aber auch die Hüfte und der Rücken betroffen und durch die Folgeschäden hauptsächlich Bandscheibe betroffen, rechts und links das Schultergelenk betroffen. Jetzt fängt es an mit der Arthrose an der Handgelenke und halt sehr starke Schmerzen. Nein, es hieß ja, es sei harmlos wie Zuckerplätzchen. Es wurde extra so beworben, als sei das völlig harmlos. Bei erheblichsten Beschwerden in der Schwangerschaft wurde das verabreicht und den Müttern suggeriert, als sei es völlig, harm, also sei es völlig unschädlich. Contagrin was based on a new synthetic substance called thyridomide. Clinical trials on animal tests of the drug failed to detect any problems. Back then, 
Doctors were shocked to find out that the drug affected not those who took it, but fetuses. Dass es im Tierversuch äh, nahezu völlig untoxisch war. Selbst Vergiftungen in großen, akute Vergiftungen, das ist wichtig, akute Vergiftungen beim gesunden Menschen kamen so gut wie gar nicht vor. Man konnte sehr große Mengen dieses Beruhigungsmittels nehmen, ohne dass es zu schädigende Wirkungen, akut schädigenden Wirkungen kam. Patients who took Conocrine gave birth to babies with deformities. But nobody compensated them, not even the government and pharmaceutical companies. That's because nobody knew about the hazards posed by thalidomide at the time. While experts were trying to figure out whether the devastating effects of the drug was concealed on purpose or whether the disaster was a result of technological limitations, many people died from complications. sind 10.000 Personen eben embryonal geschädigt worden, wovon, wovon, wovon bereits Tausende gestorben sind und insgesamt 2.800 Leute in Deutschland haben davon schwerst geschädigt überlebt. Despite much suspicion surrounding thalidomide, there was zero evidence. The dangerous effects of thalidomide was discovered recently by researchers studying cancer drugs. Sie können sich vorstellen, dass die Blutgefäßbildung ganz wichtig ist, wenn sich Gliedmaßen ausbilden. Und die Blutgefäßbildung ist offenbar gestört. Das ist der eine Fall. Und hier kann man natürlich sich auch sehr gut vorstellen, dass eine Substanz, die die Gefäßbildung stört, dass man die auch bei der Krebstherapie einsetzen könnte. Das wird untersucht. Since the thalidomide disaster, the importance of research into the potential side effects of drugs has soared, while reproductive toxicology tests became mandatory. To avoid mistakes caused by drugs that evoke different reactions in humans and animals, toxicity tests are conducted these days on primates because of their similarities to humans. The human body is more sensitive to natural toxins than many people think. Many people drink water after exercising, as well as to lose weight and stay fit. But even water can cause death. One woman in the U.S. died of hyperhydration during a water drinking contest. Scientists discovered vitamins in 1911. Since the multiple benefits of natural vitamins became well known, demand for synthetic vitamins claiming to offer similar benefits has surged. Um, I take a multivitamin tablet, so something that's got all vitamins in. I think it is important if you're um, not sure if you're getting the right amount of vitamins from your food or if you live a busy lifestyle, I think it is important to take something else to supplement it. 
um, and I take it purely for that reason and hope, fingers crossed, that it helps. <laughs> Well, it's more like preventative, really. I mean, you don't know what you would have got if you hadn't been taking them. <laughs> but, I mean, the calcium is sensible. British nutritionist and psychologist Patrick Holfold is famous for his expertise in vitamins. He always promotes the use of vitamins in his lectures. Well, if you take in an optimum amount of vitamins, the first thing you notice is that your energy goes up. So you should wake up with lots of energy. And if you don't, and you take vitamins, your energy improves. That happens straight away. Uh, the next thing that happens uh, is you start to find you have better concentration, mm -hmm. you have both physical energy, mental energy, and then after about 20 days, you notice your skin looks better. So how are you getting on with your A vast array of vitamin products with diverse effects is easily available in stores these days. Mr. Hoffel says that people taking vitamins do not need any other medicine. Uh, that is vitamin C with berries, so it's purple. This is the multivitamin, mm -hmm. and uh, these are uh, extra antioxidants. Mm -hmm. So I take that every day. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hoffel asserts that synthetic vitamins have the same effects as natural vitamins. Down the hatch, mm -hmm. nice and easy, keeps you strong. Uh, in the morning, I have the essential fats, the vitamin C, multivitamin, and antioxidant. And then I do the same thing at lunchtime. And the, uh, the objective is to make sure that every single cell in your body has an optimum supply of all of these nutrients. Mm -hmm. We know that it increases lifespan, um, it improves intelligence, it makes your immune system strong, uh, it makes your skin younger, you have less risk for diabetes, less risk for heart disease, less risk for cancer. And it gives you lots of energy. And it costs less than the Starbucks coffee. <laughs> Are synthetic vitamins as useful as natural ones? Some scientists disagree. The World Cancer Research Foundation and EU health authorities say that excessive vitamin intake can be dangerous for your health possibly retinol supplements and selenium. And certainly eating the kinds of foods that are rich in vitamins and minerals uh, in, in uh, healthy amounts is likely to decrease risk of cancers. So it's only when people are taking high doses of often of single micronutrients as supplement forms that we know that there's evidence of harm. The results of a study conducted by Copenhagen University in 2007 were stunning. The study found that cancer patients who took vitamins on a regular basis had a higher risk of death than those who didn't. There is no such thing as a perfect medicine or a perfect toxin. Experts say the problem lies not in vitamins but in how people take them. Good. A little bit of it is necessary, therefore a lot of it must be better. That is not the case, and there are potential harms. Just like selenium, some of these vitamins can be poisonous at high doses, particularly the fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, retinol, and vitamin D. They can damage the liver, for instance, and other, uh, cause other problems. Uh, and so, by and large, it's a, a bad idea to rely on supplements, uh, by and large, and to, get, to aim to get your vitamins and minerals from a healthy, balanced diet. All substances in the world contain toxins, but they can also be used as medicine. Whether a substance is a toxin or a medicine is up to you.